think we're good. <laughs> I think we are live. All right. Cool. <laughs> so, as you can see, I have a very beautiful ZBrush document here for us to play around with. Just kidding. All right. So, let's go ahead, let's load this bad boy up. Let's go over into Candyland. <coughs> okay, two things. I wanna work on my scene a little bit. We have our beautiful scene. Um, and then I think I wanna go through and add in the, the new dragon head, maybe work on the horns before I, you know, before I work on the new dragon head or add the dragon head into this scene, probably want to go ahead and like make the horns the way that I actually want them. So here's just to be able to show you what we got to last week. Okay, which I think is turning out super cool. <laughs> okay. Um, still, still some progress to be made. Still, you know, need to need to make some changes and you know, finalize some things, vary some things up, give it some interest. Um, but really, it's starting to come along. Starting to be something that that I uh, that I feel really excited about. <coughs> and uh, oh, notes. Some of the things that I feel like I need to go through and do. Let me see, that's old, I can get rid of that. Okay, things that I wanna go through and do uh, with the dragon. Okay, so with the dragon's gums, um, I want it to be kind of like a like gummy bear type material, like a, like a red translucent, um, Lucent, uh, I'm not sure exactly how you would spell that, but it's it's there somehow. <laughs> Is the are the titles still showing Ashley? Because yeah, I'm not Ashley. Yeah, um, I wish I was Ashley. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't wish I was Ashley. Um, it's quite the getting my audio is on. Shouldn't be on. All right. <coughs> yeah, how about that? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. So sorry about that. So yes, for now I'm Ashley. Um, the Ashley that's not as cool, not as good looking, not as whatever, whatever. Yeah, you, you, you decide what you will. Okay. So the gums need to be translucent. Um, I need to do the horns. Okay, now with the gums being translucent, I mean, it's not really something that I can do super well in ZBrush. It's something that I can uh, try to fake in some way. And I've got to work on a way to be able to do that for the, uh, the gummy rings that go around the eyes as well. But the idea will be to make it feel like it's, in fact, you know, and, and one of the ways that we can do that with the material is by going in and adding in kind of a, a wax, um, what's it called, uh, a wax preview. <coughs> so yeah, looks like a Chinatown parade head. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully it looks cooler than that when I'm done. No, just kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, so the things that I wanna go through and do, I need to develop a couple of, um, oh, looks like Kyle got the, uh, got the titles all switched over. Thanks, man. You're the man. <laughs> yeah, it's a cake topper. It really kind of feels like it'd be a cake topper with how this is turning out. So <laughs> it's kind of like a big chocolate cake um, I'm going to want to figure out, well, first off, I need to 
kind of rework some of this. So what I might do, that could be kind of cool. Let's uh, let's go ahead and <laughs> sorry, I was Ashley for three minutes. It's okay. It's okay. Ashley's cool. We'll take it as a compliment. We'll, we'll swing with it. Hopefully she's as forgiving as I am. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead, curve tube. <coughs> and what I want to do, first thing, say is samples, modifiers. Perfect. Brush modifiers down to eight. That's exactly what I wanted. I, so I must have replaced the brush, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, curve, curve step at one. I want to lock, start, and end. And then let's actually play with this too. So I want to get myself um, a little bit of um, a little bit of a uh, tapering. Um, actually, maybe maybe not quite that much. So so essentially, what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to drag it out from the cliffside and. Uh, Oh, come on. It's not wanting to select that. Yeah, select this one. Okay. Cool. <coughs> okay, let's make this bigger. I wonder if it'll work in dynamic, with dynamic mode turned off. Uh, let's do this, though. Let's make, like, a big archway. Something to add some, some dynamic... Um, shaping to this, although I don't, I don't think I'm liking that per se. So let's make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> That's too big. <laughs> although one of the things that I can do, let's see, let's let's experiment with this real quick. So I went through and I reset it so that the curve set was at one. But what if I were to set it so that it's at like 0.25? There we go. See now we're getting that shape. If I make it bigger, it's keeping the shape. There we go. Cool. So that's one really cool uh, use for that curved step. Because if I had it normally, normally the way that I like to have it is so that it's had a curved step of one. <laughs> so that when I click on it, it has an edge loop every, every span of that curve. But if I go through and I change that down, lower it's going to make it so that there are edge loops more regularly along this curve which means that it gives me more opportunities to be able to have that curve profile kind of come into play so that is extremely helpful and it makes me happy okay let's give see if we can get this back you there we go there we go okay so we're gonna commit that Quintonius how you doing brother how are you doing okay let's change up that focal shift one of the things that I'll be doing <coughs> one of the things that I'll be doing this round I want to show you guys a little uh, a, a, a way that you can use booleans to be able to create um, interesting to be able to create some landscape. Um, you know, it's like well, for instance, one of the things that I want to do to this landscape uh, landscape details is what I was going to say is I want to make it so that it feels like the top of this peak are like floating chunks of chocolate. Just to be something kind of, you know, like really uh, uh, fantastical and whatnot, outlandish. <coughs> so I'm going to use booleans to be able to split that apart, make separate chunks, and be able to kind of float them away from, from each other and whatnot. Um... And I also want to make sure that I create materials. 
I'm gonna make new materials um, for chocolate. I'll be using a skin shade four. I'll go through and I'll modify that so that's like this custom material that will uh, be usable and will look more like chocolate. <coughs> um, so it'll be a chocolate shade one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my, my, my mountain of chocolate. This is uh, <laughs> the most fantastical piece of chocolate anyone has never seen before. <laughs> Let me see if I can get this to actually work, though. That's one of the things that, if anybody has any tips on how to do this, that would be a fantastic thing to learn. So, I'm finding... You know what? I wonder if turning this up. Uh, it feels like it might have done a little something. Maybe not. One of the things that I'm finding that I'm having trouble with is that it's not really grabbing the mesh and pulling it when it's when it's this large. <coughs> um, so if you have If you have any tips for that, that would be fantastic to know. <laughs> Quintonis, <laughs> dude. Thanks, man. <laughs> Ghost. <laughs> you could make a Candyland pack for gum. You could say, sell a literal gum road. <laughs> Snake hook. Yeah, let me, let me try it. Let me try it. And one of the hard things is that I don't, ooh, that's moving really nicely though. Okay, let's turn off RGB because I don't need it to colorize it. Dude, dude, night shadow, you rock. Okay, so now let's come over here and let's start modifying this a little bit because this is this is going like way too straight up and down, <laughs> and that's just not how I fly. That's just not how I fly, y'all. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna play with this a little bit. Thank you so much for telling me about that. Did you? Where did it? Uh, man, so useful. Whoever pays you to do work, they should double it. Man, it's so helpful. It's so helpful. <laughs> okay, that's too much. <laughs> Let's kind of take this down, something like that. Okay, one of my favorite tricks. I want to kind of flatten this bottom a little bit. So I'm going to use my, not my gizmo. I'm going to use my actual move tool. I know, like, if you're young enough in the ZBrush realm, you haven't even seen what this does. <laughs> but what I'll do is I'll grab that center line and I'll clip it down. And it's good about right there. You see that? We got this nice flat side here and it's not totally flat because it didn't get like all the rest of that wasn't quite down to the bottom but you know that's that's okay that's okay let's kind of take this dragon tail move it around until it's making me happy 
want to make sure that it's not moving through the mountain. <coughs> so make it good. Dang. It's so good to have the chat so chatty today. <laughs> Same thing. Let's go ahead and we'll just clip this down so that it stops about where the other one stops. And let's work on our chocolate shader. Okay. The flattened deformer in the gizmo. I have. Um, I like to say I'm a traditionalist, <laughs> but that's not entirely the. Uh, reasoning of it i just find it quick and you and like really really handy you know so it's just nice it's nice it's a lot of nice okay cool oh my goodness dude who was it that said snake hook you have rescued me nightshade i think is who night shadow there we go <laughs> Hard candies. Yeah, I was thinking of hard candies. I was also thinking of, uh, <laughs> it just kind of makes me laugh in uh, Wreck It Ralph when they have the uh, um, the jawbreaker. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dumb thing, but you know, it might be one of those things that I think about. Okay, let me see. I'm going to kind of tweak this shape. Let's, let's work on that. Uh, Chocolate shader. Oh, okay, so we are already good. What a moron. He genius, it's a jawbreaker. <laughs> Has everybody already seen the uh, the second one? Cause I haven't. How lame is that? I work for Disney and I still haven't seen it. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not lame. Okay, let's kind of let's let's play with that shape a little bit. We'll make it get skinny and then thick and then skinny and then thick. And then we'll play with it some more later. All right, for the chocolate shader, let's go ahead and select skin shade four. <coughs> Say, copy material. And then I'm going to pick one that I don't ever use. I'm going to select this one. <laughs> I'm going to say paste material. Okay, so now this is skin shade five. Okay. Okay, so I don't want brush open, I want my material open. Modifiers. Okay, we're gonna start with our color and trying to figure that out, making this work the way that we want it to. And you know what? Maybe it's not even Maybe it's not even about making it brown. Maybe it's about making it feel like chocolate and we can just have a chocolate color. Let's make it a little bit warmer. Let's fill that. Always yes. Okay, that's not nearly. Oh, you know what? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna wanna split this off actually. Let's say split masked. We'll hold on to this uh, this little archway here. Cause I want to have the uh, the dynamic be pretty heavy on this, just so I can get a smoother highlight. Yeah, there's a snake hook too brush. And there's also like a cactus hook brush. I don't know what, I don't remember what they call it. What do they call it? 
They call it a uh, snake cactus. <laughs> yeah, and there's this snake hook too, which has some. Uh, it has some special like. You know, like it, with if you're if you're going through and you're trying to use your move tool and you hold Alt when you when you uh, use your move tool, it'll pull out. It'll pull those points out along the normal. Uh, so the snake hook two has that functionality. The snake hook one does not. Uh, so that's that's kind of the main difference that I know about that. Um, dude, you went to that Wreck It Ralph two. CTN lottery. <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. That is so, so cool. A really good game that takes place in Candyland with a level editor. You want know it to be cool? It'd be cool to have a Super Smash Brothers <laughs> that takes place in Candyland. You know, since you're talking about a game level. Okay, let's let's get back to making this look like chocolate. Let's make it a little bit warmer. Okay, color. Let's and actually, I I wish that it wasn't filled at all. Let's let's turn off the color so that it updates as I update it. Okay, <clears throat> so. Let's add one more smooth subdiv level to this. Okay, I need to grab the chocolate. Do I have a piece over here? Okay. Okay, so I've got a, I've got some chocolate here. These are big pieces. I got a lot of chocolate here. I got lots of little pieces. Okay. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's all chocolate. Check that out. Oh yes! Look at all that chocolate. <laughs> so yeah, one of the things I want to do. It's a bit dusty. Try to get this down so that it's just. This is not going back in the bag, by the way. <laughs> just for all of those who are thinking like, like sanitary, <laughs> their sanitary alarms are going off. It's like, <laughs> don't ever let him share chocolate with you. <laughs> No, so the thing that I am that I'm looking at is I'm trying to look at the smooth spots and I'm trying to figure out what those highlights look like. Okay, so oh, that got a little bit rubbed off. Okay, so it's fairly speculative. So like the way <laughs> where's Ashley? Brandon Piper? Dude, Brandon Piper uh, is total stud, way, way awesome, way awesome uh, ZBrush artist. Uh, I had the privilege of having him in class when I was teaching up in Salt Lake. Um, yeah, so if anybody, if anybody has a moment, go check out his stuff. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you have stuff up on uh, our station, right, Brandon? Um, yeah, sorry, I'm not Ashley. <laughs> yeah, Brandon, check it out. This is uh, this is what I'm working on right now. It's making this uh, donut dragon sort of <laughs> character. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's totally just something for fun, having fun with it. But you know, it's what we do. It's what we do. We just have fun with it. Okay. So, <laughs> saludos a Peru. <laughs> ok, 
Okay, let me see. So one of the things that I want to look at when I'm trying to decide... Oh, I don't want to put it on top of that. Um, when I'm trying to decide about my... Um, I need to decide about things like highlight. What's the highlight like? Uh, what color is it? You know, usually when you get a colored highlight, it's usually indicative of some sort of metallic material. <clears throat> and chocolate is not metal. Okay. But one of the one of the interesting things, and, and I think I rubbed off the chocolate too much in some of the areas, but in the area where there isn't any dust and where I didn't rub, it's still shiny. And it's shiny because of the mold that it was that it was in. But it's not like a super, super hot highlight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with this specular curve. Okay. We're going to see about making it more specular. <coughs> Maybe what we'll do, let's play with a piece that has some sculpting to it. Just because it might be a little bit easier to... Which piece do we have? Okay, it's this one. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, we should go through and count how many people. Somebody keep tally. Somebody keep tally of how many people come through asking about why Ashley looks so different. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. That's like super, super kind of you. <laughs> Okay, let me see. Let's get this maybe to be a little bit sharper. What I'm trying to do is we want this uh, It's funny, it looks like everything has skin shade 5 now. Which I don't want, but I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. And one of the things I'm trying to avoid is having it look too much like it's a gem. <laughs> yeah, see, like if I turn up my metallicity, <laughs> you see, I like it colors the highlight. It makes it look really kind of almost satiny. It's really kind of weird. Howdy, Mark. Yeah, it's pretty scary these days working at a game studio. What am I sculpting quickly? Okay, so what I'm sculpting quickly, <laughs> I'm not really sculpting much of anything quickly. Um, I'm trying to go through and figure out noise. What is the noise referred to? Okay. I don't like it, so we're going to get rid of it. Um, what I'm sculpting is a Candyland inspired scene, which has, I mean, it will have this cool uh, gummy dragon. <laughs> right now, it kind of just has it blocked in a little bit. You can see him, he's like wrapped around this, uh, this mountainous peak. Let me see, let's actually turn off just so that we can make sure that we have all of this made out of chocolate. It's feeling too specular for me. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's take our specular down. Let's experiment with this. Colorized diffuse. Let's see what it's doing. Oh, it's making it warmer. I don't want it to make it warmer. I don't want it. So we're going to get rid of it. <laughs> I'm 
trying to decide if that's looking pretty good or if I like that. Yeah, so I want to go through those, uh, those Oreos are fun. And I want to go through and uh, apply more kind of weathering like that to the rest of the, of the scene. Um, but I'm trying to make sure that I, you know what, here we go. We gotta, we gotta take, take the document to a lighter color. <coughs> the, uh, it's too hard to, to see everything if there's not enough contrast. Okay, so that's not looking enough like chocolate. I think that's starting to look better. What do you guys think? How long does it take to learn the curve for ZBrush? Um, making them or using them? Uh, are, you, are you referring to these curves in order to uh, uh, these curves in order to control different elements, or are you talking about using a curved brush? Um, these curves, it's really just a matter of playing with them, but and and they mean different things depending on where it is that you're using them. So these curves and these modifiers for the materials, um, this is showing like the high point, the point of, uh, let me turn on my magnifying glass. Okay, so this point up here to the top right, this is like the pinnacle of your, of your highlight. And then over here in the bottom left is referring to, is, this is showcasing your, um, you know, as, as you get away from where the highlight happens or would happen. If I wanted to, if I wanted to, I don't know why I would want to. No, actually, I, I do know why I'd want to. So if I wanted to create a material that had kind of a Fresnel effect, which has kind of like this uh, velvet sort of, uh, sort of feel. Okay, so you see it's getting... starting to get kind of a little bit of a of a highlight along that side but if I were to take this part down you see it's getting rid of that so it really just kind of depends on what it is that you're that you're wanting um, shift them oh come on you Something like that. Okay, let me see. One of the other things that I hope I'd be able to get to, because I, I really love playing with this scene, um, something else I really want to get to is being able to uh, play with the dragon, being able to sculpt the dragon more. What I want to do, I want to pull out a few smaller pieces of chocolate. Let me see if I can find some that roughly fit together. Like that's that's what I should have done. Is I should have like waited. <laughs> Ooh, that is a really cool piece. Okay, this is this is eternal reference. Check it out, let's see if we can get this. Uh... Look at how cool. All those faces and cuts and grooves. And, oh man, that's that's a cool piece. Okay, this, this needs to be kept apart. You know, I might have to actually just wing it. Okay. Hmm. Put it right 
there. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Dude, Quintonius, come on over. I'll share my chocolate with you. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. I want... Okay, so right now I have this mound of chocolate selected. I'm going to go through <clears throat> and start to prep <laughs> one for you, two for me. <laughs> you guys seen that commercial where it's like the kids are splitting things. And they're like, one for you, one for me. Two for you and one, two for me. <laughs> three for you and one, two, three for me. <laughs> so dumb but it's so funny okay so right now this is what I have and this is what I want to be able to split is this uh, this top part I want to make cracks and then I want to kind of make it so that it feels like it's just uh, this fantastical sort of floating bits of a mountain kind of floating up above it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this I'm just going to hit Control Shift D. You see it duplicates it in my subtool palette. I'm going to hit Initialize. Ooh, hoo, 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 Q cube. It's like, where did it go? Well, if we hit this, we'll see it popped up right down there. <laughs> real simple. Real, real simple. Okay. Let's take this. And I'm actually let's let's do let's do it like this. Ooh, maybe we should play with some sort of like ice cream cap or something. <laughs> okay, just for the sake. Of deleting Polygroup Island. Okay. So now we're left with this. Okay, so what I want to do with this is I am literally going to keep it pretty low poly. Okay, let's turn our dynamic mode back off so we can make our brush as big as we need it. Oh, snake hook. This boy going to learn. <laughs> There we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add edge loops as needed um, to be able to create the uh, shape variations in this crack that we want. Okay, so I'm going to take this, let's say, um, I'm going to say insert, insert, let's add one here, 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 and one right there. <coughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to turn on this dynamic mode thing uh, so that it'll help remember the... Uh, So it'll help remember which brushes I have dynamic mode turned on and off for. Okay. Anybody watching any cool shows? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to hold shift and hit that I button just so that every sub tool is turned off.
turn it back on. Let me turn on the mountain that we're cutting from too. Okay. So I have so far this little piece. You see. Good chalk that goes through a tempering process makes it glossy. It also has to do with the mold that it comes from. Um, and you'll see this with whatever material you're, you're casting with. If you're casting something, um, it will be glossy. If you, if, if, the, if the master model was glossy, because then the mold takes on the glossy or the rough surface uh, quality. And so uh, it's the same thing with with the uh, with the foods that you that you cast. It's kind of kind of neat. Okay, let me see. I'm trying to decide. How broken up I want this to be. Let me see. <laughs> Ruth, that's that's funny. Oh, the learning curve. Okay, I get it. I get it. The learning curve in ZBrush. I understand now. <laughs> okay, Mark. So, the learning curve with ZBrush, I mean, I feel like I'm constantly learning, which is good. I mean, that's definitely, like, what you want. Because, I mean, if you're using something that just comes entirely too naturally and you don't feel challenged it's i don't know it loses some of its flavor <coughs> okay i'm going to take this let's say q mesh no actually it's not say q mesh let's say extrude all polygons just to give it a little bit of thickness okay now the reason this is important to me, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Live Booleans, turn this to a negative, okay, and now I can look at this and get a little bit of an idea of what that shape is going to be. I don't like how it's going so far, so I'm going to take this, oops, not that. Take this, and now we can design the crack based on the piece that we're using to cut the crack with. Okay, so let's uh, let's pull this up some. Snake hook. I'm learning. I'm learning. We'll get there. Oh, I'm liking that so much better. Okay, okay, that'll be cool. That'll be cool. We'll, we'll call that good. Yeah, it's it's funny, Ruth, because I don't think I'd even need the spoon. Ooh, is this like... No, where did that other piece go? Is this that same piece that I had taken out already? Nerds. Oh, no, I think this is it. No, it's not. They just have the similar sort of break. Oh, it's like I found these cool pieces that have like these these funny looking little grooves. You see those? I'll have to I'll have to keep. I'll keep that one. I'm trying to like put together like a collected chocolate.
Now we'll actually go through So sorry, <laughs> but only a little bit. <laughs> Remember, I've got plenty. <laughs> Broadcast interrupted. What? Did that happen on the other platforms too? On, on YouTube and Twitch? Or is that just Facebook? going through and it's trying to process the the boolean effect now you can you can see like down over here in the middle of the screen to the right under subtool that's where we're able to go through and process our booleans um, in order to preview them we have to have live boolean turned on which is in the top left corner there <clears throat> and then we just go ahead and we write it on until it says hey look I'm done <laughs> so hopefully hopefully it does it <laughs> okay ghost so the um, it looks like the broadcast is doing something funny then okay let me see if I can Error 2000. Is it still doing it? Okay, it's better now? Okay, I'm wondering if it's because I was trying to run my booleans. Um, <coughs> let me try this. I'm gonna take this piece. Let's append this piece. Okay, so now that there's a lot less um, okay, that's a pain, that is such a pain, it's okay, okay, so let's see if we can get this to work then, because I mean it was having a hard time processing the boolean, so let's see if it'll, if it'll do it, if it doesn't do it, then we'll just work on something else and I'll, I'll have to do all the boolean stuff off screen, and uh, and I can share it with you guys at some other time, but... C'est la vie, mon ami. Ah.
funny because the boolean shouldn't be taking that long. What a pain. Well, okay, well, just to be able to save what we have and turn off my live booleans, I don't really need it. I'm just gonna hit save and save that out. Okay. Let's just go ahead. I'll focus on getting this going. Okay, so I'm gonna make note, make sure that I remember that I have to do that at some other time. <clears throat> okay. Hopefully it's working for everybody. Good grief. So, landscape, we'll write down booleans. I don't really like wearing hats, but I do sometimes. <laughs> booleans off screen. Okay. So, while that was all frozen up, I went ahead and I took the opportunity to grab the other candies that I have uh, purchased for reference, I have some gummy bears, I have some Mike and Ike's, I have some Runt's, and I also have some of these little uh, licorice candies. Um, they're the ones that everybody probably traded it off. <laughs> Siddharth. We're all noobs in ZBrush, it's okay. It gets better, it gets better. All right. So, let's come over here, let's figure this out. Let's go really quickly. I want to come in, I want to edit my surface noise. Uh, one of the things that I'm feeling with this is that it's too pasty. And I have this color blend Okay, this color blend I can go through and I can change how much it's affecting my mesh and if it's affecting the cavities, like the ins the inner parts, the, the dips, or if it's affecting the crests, the, the high points. Um, I do want something there, but... Think. Oops, wrong button. Yeah, I mean we're we're just gonna have to not worry about the the booleans and the landscape stuff for right now. I'll just do the landscape stuff afterward. And um, off stream. Okay. 
Okay. That's a little bit better. I like that better. Okay. Now, this noise is not the same as this noise. It's slightly different, and it's just a noise that, I mean, it's, it's something that I that I know is different because <laughs> they're just different meshes. So I'm just going to like alt click on this, edit, paste, and now I know that they're the exact same noise. Okay, you saw it change slightly as I backed out of it. Okay, so skin shade 5. I want to I want to make sure that I save skin shade 5 and let's save it as let's call it candy shade 5 okay and let's see what if I were to take this and let's let's change this to Candy Shade 5. Okay, some of the other things I'm going to want to play with on this particular material, though, <clears throat> is uh, I want it to have a few things. I want it to have um, the wax preview, and I want it to feel... It's so funny. Before all the crashing happened, we had, we had around 60 people uh watching and now we have 20 <laughs> so <laughs> it's funny um but i've got all the friends around so you know we're good we're good all right cavity intensity i don't see that doing anything Maybe, I, maybe it's just a matter of no it's funny because it's like it, I can see it doing something in the preview let's try this let's go ahead Now let's turn this back on. Let's hit C, just so we can keep that color. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem to be doing anything for it. Oh well. So we'll just take this yeah, cavity stuff. Whoa. All this stuff that I hadn't played with before, actually. It's kind of funny. Maintain specular, colorize diffuse. I am gorgeous. <laughs> So one of the things we talked about was Ooh. I can do that. I can do that. And the two of those together. I can say extract. <laughs> that looks so gloppy. <laughs> Which could be cool. I mean, it could be like a jelly filled donut sort of center. <laughs> Since he's like, he looks like he's made out of donuts. So <laughs> it just kind of works. Candyland Battle Royale mixed with chess. That would be something. 
That would be something. Alright, so. Okay. So right now. We gotta figure out how to make this work for us, guys. We gotta figure out how to make it work. What you looking for, hun? Awesome. Wonder Woman just walked in the room and she just found her shoe. <laughs> She's great. She's so wonderful. So these are all separate pieces. And I might actually have to make this uh, this jelly pad like again at some point in the future. Um, because I'm still not totally sold on what I'll be doing with like teeth arrangements and then at some point when I make the uh, when I make the topology I'm going to want to make sure that he's you know that the that the uh, the jelly kind of follows the contour of the of the mouth and in order to do that has to have the same base topology. So, just some of the fun. Some of the fun. Okay, so I'm just gonna use some Sculptress Pro. I don't want to pull it back that much. Let's let's not do that. Okay. So right now this is kind of just a trip trying to figure out how I want this to flow. And I might just leave it like that for now. Yeah, we'll call that good. Okay, let's work on these horns. figured out what I want to do with these. I want to make the horns like um, like waffle cone. <clears throat> it, looks, it looks pretty alright. One of the things that uh, Thanks, Ruth. I'm glad you could stop by. Glad you could have fun. Okay. So one of the things that would be really tricky, I thought about going through and using nano mesh to be able to create the um, the patterns. And in order to create the patterns, actually, let's let's go ahead. Let's split this out. 
And let's see if we can go ahead and we'll build it out. Let's say initialize Q cube. Okay, so starting out, what I want to do. Okay, good. We've got the gizmo. I just want to make sure that this is in the center. And turn off symmetry and make sure it's in the center. I just want to turn it 45 degrees. Okay, this will be kind of the base for my waffle pattern. Okay, so now using my Z modeler, I can extrude a poly loop. And I want to think of this as being like half of the pattern, essentially. It's not really going to be a whole lot. Um, a single poly, let's take this and just kind of extrude it down. Actually, so let's, let's do this. Hold shift to be able to put it down and then just let it go again. Let's go ahead and say scale, polygon center. Okay, so now we're going to delete, yeah, polygroup island, polygroup island, polygroup island, that's fine. Okay, so now we've got this sort of thing going on. Okay, this doesn't look like much, but when it gets together with the rest of its pals, <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so what I want to do, let's go ahead, we're going to say bevel. Uh, edge loop partial. You know, no, let's do it this way. Let's say crease edge loop partial. Three, four. Cut. And I just want to make sure that I'm keeping my shape, keeping my base shape as much as I can. Okay. So now I've got this this nice square shape. Okay. <coughs> Candyland Minecraft with way too many in-depth food and crafting mechanics. <laughs> Do you want to add macaroni and cheese on top of that, sir? <laughs> that would be something. A really gross, terribly disgusting something. Oh, so I started watching Gotham. I thought that was kind of an interesting <laughs> spicer. <laughs> Thanks, dude. You wouldn't have thought so if you had been here a few minutes earlier. <laughs> I can guarantee that. See, we're gonna say the crease. We're gonna take that to two, and we're gonna make us our dynamic up to yeah, dynamic up to three. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's do this. I want to say for these creased edges, I want to go ahead to the bevel. I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, it's comprised. Let's get rid of those. Okay. So now we can give ourselves a little bit of a bevel. What's nice? Oh shoot. not letting me do it. Why isn't it letting me do it? Hmm. I've actually never played with that. I had no idea that was a thing. There should have been a chamfer effect though. 
And that's what's boggling my mind. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Okay, so instead of going through and doing stuff like that, we're gonna just use Zmodeler, because I like Zmodeler. Okay, let's say bevel. Let's do this. We're going to say mask edge loop partial. We're just going to mask all these corners. Invert. So now we've got this effect going on with our shape. <clears throat> Let me do this too, because I mean, I think this could be helpful. I'm going to insert single edge loop and scale that edge loop partial right here. I just want to make sure that I'm getting a much rounder or a more gradual steep up top. Because if it if it's too if it's too um, if it's too abrupt of a stop we'll get weird peaks in the middle. And I want it to be kind of a kind of a rounder top. And so instead of like a cornered top, you know. So that looks like that'll work for me. Let's decide now. Let's collapse poly loop. Just to get rid of that. Let's just slide this up just a little bit. All right. Make sure it's all one poly group. And now I think we should be good to go. Let's just try this out just for the sake of uh, trying it out. Okay, so let's create nano mesh brush. Okay, please select an insert mesh brush and then click. Okay, so what we need to do is first make this into an insert mesh brush. So create insert mesh brush, new. Now we can say create the nano mesh brush. You'll see that our icon changed to a Z modeler brush. So what we're going to do. Where is it? Okay, <laughs> you can see the size difference. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to come over, we need to open up our nano mesh tab, our palette, okay, and we're going to change our option from single poly to all polys. We're going to drag that out on the surface, okay. So now here's what we're going to do. If we say fit, uh, actually let's say fill. through and experiment with the sizes and things like that. It's one of the things that I don't want. I mean, you can see how they are rotated almost just a little bit differently. Here we go, change that rotation to zero. Now they're all facing in the right direction. <coughs> So I can already see that this is not going to be an effective technique for um, <laughs> for creating this. So let's let's go on to um, let's.
let's go on to figuring out a different way to do this. Z modeler. Let's go, let's say split. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through and, and be able to just split everything. But I want it to be in kind of a triangulated way. So maybe what I need to do, how do I how do I go about that? Point action face. What does sphere eyes do? Just because I'm seeing this? <laughs> okay, it's gonna sphere eyes the whole thing. No thank you. I figured. It's just like the deformer. Um, let's try this. Okay, if this doesn't work, no big deal, right? Oh, interesting. I thought that that was for sure like... <laughs> Dang it! Spin edges. Yeah, it's not it's not even being a little bit helpful. See this is kind of more what I'm what I was hoping to get. So get something like this, like this, like this and be able to, to go up in this sort of way. Um, let's see if I can get anything good out of this. So far, no. <laughs> I, think, I think maybe what the best thing to do at this point is to not use these horns. Um, yeah, inset something that I had thought of, but it's it's not the right direction for what I want. Uh, I want diamonds, not squares. So if we say all polys, uh, we just you know inset like that. It's kind of what what you're saying. You know, say poly group all. Okay, scale, polygroup all. Um, there we go. So I mean, you know, there's something like that, but I mean, it's, it doesn't look like a waffle cone. Let's see. doesn't really look like a waffle cone. <laughs> Insert point. Let me see if I can figure out what... Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Luxion, that is amazing. That is amazing. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Now, if only I could find a way. I, the, it's not letting me do it to every single one of them, which might be all right. I mean, if I'm to think about. Yeah, it goes down to there. So like it doesn't, we don't even need it for that last loop. It's okay, it's easy enough to go through and just do it one by one, I guess. Dude, I had no idea that button existed. That's one of the things that I really like about going through and just playing with these brushes because there really are just a buttload of controls and things that could be helpful. Um, 
but you know some of these things I just I haven't really taken the time to, to play with all of them so that was that was really really helpful dude thank you very much okay Okay now, so, here's what we're going to do, going to use a lot of slide, because we got to get these into a much more uniform sort of position. Let's see. Let's go polish my features. I mean, we're losing a little bit of our shape, but we're getting the shape inside of the polygons that we want. And I think that that's probably much more valuable to me at this point. So... Oh, guys, speaking of dragons, How to Train Your Dragon 3 comes out on Friday. And I worked on it, so you better go watch it. <laughs> Is anybody excited to go see it? that is for me um, just because not because I work for Disney but because <laughs> I work <laughs> um, but I mean I think that uh, it's my first it's my first feature film credit And I couldn't be more excited. <laughs> so I think that if there were a time to do it, it's for this one. <laughs> I think it doesn't want to keep it, keep the poly group, keep the uh, temp poly group, unless I tap rather than rather than drag. What a drag. Okay, and then I think that row at the very tip here, that's going to be our last one. Because if I go too far, then we're going to start to lose the shape too much for my liking. I mean, I already wish that it was more square over there. I I would really like to... Ooh. I wonder if there's a good way to do that. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if there's a good way to go through and make, yeah, essentially make the cone. Um, the way that the cone would actually be made, you know? <laughs> actually like rolled so it, 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 it starts off like this right 
and then uh, so you have your waffle pattern on there and everything's you know, straight and uniform but then they roll it so you end up with you know something like that um, is there a roll deformer <laughs> we would probably want those as well so what we're gonna do let's let's go ahead and let's just say poly group uh, single poly sure So let's change this to Polygroup Island. Hopefully, yeah. Okay. Not a Control Shift X. Okay, then we'll change it back to Single Poly. We'll get these little guys in here. Deform. I thought of that because, like, the way that we go through, we would make like um, I had this I had this prop that I made for dragons for how to train your dragons. That was uh, a map, and um, it's Grimmel's map that he uses to be able to track dragons and whatnot. And this map, it's rolled on the ends. And the way that I did that, I mean, it was in it was in Maya. It wasn't in ZBrush. Um, it was using the the bend deformer, and that was an awesome trick. <laughs> that was an awesome trick. Polygroup all inset region. Not that much. Okay, so we're gonna get that and that. I wonder if that's gonna be too much. We'll find out, we'll find out. Okay, so we're gonna need to polygroup, polygroup all. I want to make sure that it's a new polygroup, something that hasn't been done yet. Okay. Something like that, something like that. Okay, cool. So, so far, we want to do two things. Okay, so we want to use extrude, polygroup all, and let's just kind of hold shift, or, you know, start moving it and then hold shift. And then we can kind of push it in a little bit. Yeah, you know what? That worked. <laughs> that worked. Now, of course, it, it doesn't look right if you hit the smooth deformer, but... Let's see what we can do.
let's do this. We're gonna go geometry, crease, I'm just gonna say crease all. Okay, and then let's say, let's go in here to crease, polygroup all. I want to polygroup inner. Okay, so that was simple. That was so great. Okay, so what I did, I have the settings like this, okay? So I have it to crease because I went through and I hit crease for all. Now it's creasing every single edge on this mesh, <clears throat> but I don't want it to crease every single edge on the mesh. So what I did is I set it up so that, uh, let's let's put it somewhere where you guys can see on the on the stream. So I've got this set up so that I can go through and I can see uh, crease, polygroup all, okay? But I changed it from all faces to polygroup inner. And I can't just hold alt and click because that's just gonna change my polygroup to a temporary poly, or my polygon to a temporary polygroup. So I'm gonna hit, I'm going to, you know, click on it. And then while I'm clicking on it, hit alt and then let go of it, okay? And so now you can see it's getting me creasing only where I want it. Oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. So cool. I'm like geeking out because of you guys now. This is so great. <laughs> this is so great, guys. You have no freaking idea. Okay, so let's take this. I'm going to go ahead and say insert. Just gonna bring the bring in the new horns. Turn these off. Okay, let's just kind of move these a little bit so that they're intersecting a little bit more. Okay, I just want to kind of control these shapes a bit more. Just on a, in a broad sense, you know. This is starting to work. Dude, I'm geeking out. I'm geeking out. Okay. Just trying to like stylize these shapes a little bit better. Just so that I get something that's more appealing. Okay. <laughs> now to make it look like waffle cone. <laughs> Does he have ice cream for brains? You'd hope not. It'd be like this constant brain, fr uh, brain freeze, you know? <laughs> okay. Let me see, what time is it? 9.40, took me long enough, all right. <coughs> so, 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 so. Before we hang up tonight, I want to figure out feet two. first.
come over here. Fill object. Fill object. Okay. Now we can come over here. Now we can figure out what we can do. <laughs> Good to have you back, G-Ben. Okay. And what's cool is that this is all still low poly. <laughs> it doesn't even have any uh, subdivisions to it. It's kind of neat. Um, man, I'm kicking out. It's so cool. Okay. So, what we want to do. Let's go ahead and let's grab Control Shift D. Let's say initialize it down to a cube. What I want to do is I want to grab my curve snap. There we go. Okay. So what I'm thinking about doing, and and around here it's going to be slightly different. So we're essentially going to go around here. Come on, you. There we go. Okay, kind of hook it around like that. Make it like this. Uh, Like this frosting it's kind of like holding it on there but instead of keeping it constant like this like look at look at how boring that looks okay it's like super super boring shape to this uh, to this stroke so what I'm gonna do this is super cool I'm gonna come to my curve fall off and instead of having it all like having it all, you know, thin to thick. I'm going to take this, I'm going to add noise. Okay. Now you see that. Instantly, we're getting this really cool kind of globby sort of look. Okay. So now, when we use it, and actually I want the color to be white because it's frosting for Pete's sake. Okay. Okay, we'll call that good. I want to take this. I'm just kind of wave it on the top like that. And just like that, we get some fairly all right frosting. I need to go through and kind of fix a couple of little spots. <laughs> but it's so simple. Uh, I've, I've never been able to figure out a cool use for that noise bit until just now. Okay, so right here it's getting too like globby. So I'm just gonna grab it, hit shift. Oh, grab this one, hit shift. Okay, now I can commit it. Get my move brush out. And we'll just make some subtle movements to make it so that it's adjusted to the surface the way that we want. Dude, if it was just for the fact that I was able to get this thinking, um, be able to use the stinking uh, noise for the uh, the brush size thickness, 
That was enough for me. That was enough for me. Gecko toes, huh? Hmm. Gecko toes. I do want to have some sort of like claw attached to it. So maybe a gecko toe would be a good start. <clears throat> Look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Looks good enough to eat. <laughs> uh, so dumb. But so true. Okay. Okay, so I need to make sure that this is set. Okay. And now we don't need this piece anymore. This is just kind of a way for me to be able to get uh, a sub tool there for me to be able to work on. I'm going to hit delete hidden. Let's go ahead and rename this. We'll say um, horn frosting. Let's say eyes waffle horns <laughs> the hair is not going to matter uh, I'm not even really sure what to call these Keep it like that. Okay, let's see. Let's actually close this. Let me see if I can get. Because I mean, I swear that there was. That there was a. Um, I would have sworn that there was a, what do you even call it? <sighs> oh, there it is, wax modifiers. For real time wax preview, activate wax preview in the render, render property sub palette. Okay, so we're gonna go up under render, render properties. We need to turn on wax preview, okay? And you can see now we're starting to get this uh, wax preview going on. This is this is part of what made red wax look the way that it does. Um, so by turning that on, we're starting to get more of that, you know, red wax sort of look. <laughs> the skin shade four. In fact, let's just make sure that that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, skin shade four. Let's make sure that this is on as well. Okay. One of the things we can do is we can change some of these effects to be able to see really how it's working. Uh, and the temperature is one of the cool things that we can play with too. We can make it a cooler temperature or we can make it a warmer temperature. Just trying to make it feel like as gummy as possible and it's definitely starting to make it feel more gummy um, one of the hard things I'm running into though is that it's feeling too soft and you'll see like if we were to go through and just do a quick uh, BPR render I, I see the irony in that quick and BPR render <laughs> There we go. <coughs> you can see that Fresnel effect that we were that we were playing with having much more effect. It's like right along the edges of the 
pieces that we're playing with. So if we were to put it to negative 100, I'm pretty sure that would take it to the uh, the inside. So it would be shining through the middle of the of the uh, object that it's on. Yeah, you see that? You can see it pretty, pretty well right here on the teeth. Okay, so you can see the teeth and how like in the shadows you're getting this really, really deep red kind of going through there. I, I mean, if you were to come over here, you could play with the temperature. And like I said, you know, 100, the positive direction it makes it warmer. Negative direction over to negative 100 would make it bluer. Um, but yeah, we're getting this really, really interesting sort of uh, subsurface type um, effect going in here. Um, the Fresnel is something that we're going to want to play with a little bit. The radius, maybe take it down a little bit. Uh, the radius is going to be like how far it branches off of that, uh, that, you know, the strongest point. Let's take this exponent, let's make it two. Okay. Temperature, yeah, let's leave it, let's leave it warm. Let's put it around, you know, between 50 and 60, something like that. Let's see what it looks like now. Okay, it's starting to look better. And this is part of, you know, this is just kind of part of the, the process. I'm trying to figure out kind of what's going to be included. Um, or, or what's going, how, how things are going to look, how things are going to end up looking. And the materials and developing those materials is a huge part of that. Um, let me go over to the jelly. the jelly. <coughs> let's um let's do this. We're gonna go toy plastic and we're going to say copy material. say paste material and now we're going to turn on the wax modifiers okay so I want this for the jelly okay so I'm going to come over here, let's select the, the red from the mouth, but I want this to be deeper, maybe slightly more purple, so it feels like a raspberry or something like that, you know, something, something different, something nice. I want to make sure that the specular's all the way up, maybe take the uh, diffuse down a little bit, and eh, maybe not. Let's turn our transparency up just a little bit. Okay, reflectivity. Yeah, we can turn that up just a little bit. We'll play with it. Okay, so. So after our <clears throat> Baking and texturing and substance, I realize the eyes of my character need to be a bit more forward than it is. Can I do that in this stage? Yes. Um, one of the things that you'll find is that if you if you adjust your eyes, if it's if it's just a little bit, then then fine. But if it's if you adjust it and there's a lot of adjustment, a lot of movement, 
uh, you might find that the textures for your uh, for your character might get stretched. Um, so th and that's that's one of the things that you always want to be kind of careful of is modifying your mesh after you have textures. Um, that was one of the things that was always kind of a pain in the butt when I was at Warner Brothers was just how <laughs> just how um, extremely terrible people were <laughs> in uh, making us making us do just just all these all these uh, <laughs> textures before the model was done because we would go through we would have to take the character all the way to um, essentially to finish and then they'd come back and say, okay, well we need to change proportions and this, that, and the other. And then we're just like, <laughs> we already have textures. <laughs> Sometimes it's not a huge deal, um, but other times it really kind of is. Let's make that change again. All right. That's interesting. Okay. Let's see. We wanted to take this to the toy plastic one. Okay. And I'm having troubles for some reason in filling this. Oh, looks like it might have worked. Yep, it worked. Okay, so for some reason, it didn't want to work, but it does now. <sighs> Go figure, right? Okay, so... Right here, underneath Display Properties, if you're wanting something to have some transparency to it inside of ZBrush, when you render, you have to come on and you have to turn on under the display properties BPR settings. You have to go to this uh, transparent option. Um, would you like it to? Yes, I would like it to BPR visibility. I'm just going to turn it down to like 83%. Um, yes, I want BPR shadows. Okay. Let's do a render test just to see what it's doing. Uh, make sure we're putting our settings in the right direction. And if it's not, then we got to figure something out. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so you can see you can see it really well on the other side. <clears throat> in fact, that might be a little bit too much of a transparency so I'm going to take it down a little bit less than that okay so yeah let's let's, let's go ahead and do that and then we'll re-render and see what it does okay so we're getting some interesting things happening here let's see if we can figure out what it's doing Let's just turn it all the way up to 100 just to see what it does. Because I did see that it made a little bit of a difference um, in changing it from 80 whatever up to 90 whatever. Interesting. Okay, so now just to be able to test it, take the BPR shadows all the way down. Just kind of remember what it is that it looks like. Okay. Oh, that got rid of a whole lot of 
interest down here. So we definitely want the BPR shadows up, the visibility up. In fact, I wonder if I can make this. Nope, I can't make it more than 100. It's just 100. Okay. So, and that's something that'll only show at render time. So, okay, it looks like you can still see through. Let's take this, make sure that it's not just kind of floating, because that's really weird. And since this part is all temp anyway, we're not going to spend a ton of time on it. Uh, it means it's temporary, it means it might be be something more permanent at some point in the future. Um, so right now, I'm not caring about but I do think it to be representational of what I want it to look like in the end. Okay, so I'm in trying to make sure that this is covering all the parts that I need it to, that it's not standing out too much. figure out making this waffle cone look right. Okay, let's change this, at least the color. Okay, and now let's figure out a material that could work well for it. Man, I am tired today, guys. <laughs> I am so, so tired. some really, really annoying <laughs> Okay, let's do this. We're going to come up here. We're going to turn off our paints. doesn't look like it's actually doing anything so hopefully it's doing something for me because it's really kind of driving me nuts that that I keep getting okay so let's go ahead color fill object every time I change materials the eye rings and the uh, and the mouth jelly have been changing as well and that's that shouldn't be happening okay it looks like that's actually not too bad huh? okay so over here we're going to use some fancy masking tools okay so you can see how I went ahead I hit mask by smooth smoothness <laughs> And you can see what it is that it left unmasked. <laughs> okay, so let's let's come over here. Let's get this. Let's get a little bit of a more golden color. And that looks too green. Let's 
I'm not I'm not liking that, how that looked. Let's let's try masking by ambient occlusion. We didn't get anything that way. Let's say mask by cavity. Well that got us something. <laughs> okay, let's do that. That's, that's not working for me. Okay, let's let's go ahead. Let's change our Z intensity, our, RG, our RGB intensity rather, to something really low, and we'll just gradually fill it until it feels better. So part of what it is, what material is this? Okay, so this is chalk, and the chalk doesn't take light very well. Like it doesn't look as you know nicely lit and things like that. Um, Let's actually come over here. <laughs> that looks terrible. Okay. The chalk doesn't take to lighting very well. So what we're gonna do, let's just let's just work on making this feel oh, not that. The waffle cones, please. Okay, noise. What we want to do is give it that sort of effect. Yeah, and let's 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 keep it so that it's going in like that sort of thing. <coughs> Color blend. Yeah, that's kind of working for me. That's kind of working for me. If I decide I don't like it, like right now, <laughs> dragging, do I want to replace it? Yes. Okay. that having the noise on there might just be too much. I think ZBrush is like wanting to say I'm not happy. So yeah, we'll have it there, but we're gonna turn it off. Just because I feel like it's uh, making for a real hard time to actually be able to move around and work and you know do things in a smooth sort of way. Okay. Cool, so I think that this is really setting up a really cool look for our dragon, okay? Um, 
one of the other things I want to go ahead and do is I want to take this and I kind of want to make it a little bit darker brown. As if maybe it had gotten toastier or something. So let's uh, let's let's do this. We're gonna go to our uh, standard brush, RGB. That's great. Let's turn on. Yeah, let's do that. We'll just use an alpha. Let's just grab one of these that kind of has like a broken up edge. I don't know that it really matters a whole lot at this point because I'm working on a really low poly model. These uh, these antenna have no resolution, so I don't really have to worry too much about some color variation in this. The reason I want to get some color variation is because it helps to make, you know, helps to give more interest um, for sure. Um, like if I were wanting to show this to my to my supervisor at Disney, or even you know, show it to friends elsewhere. Um, I would want to make sure that let's go ahead and let's turn this alpha back on. sure that it's presented in the best possible light with the most complete um, proof of concept as I can give it and the best way to give it the best chance in uh, showing it to showing it to an art director or to a friend or to supervisor is by making sure that um, making sure that it's as complete as you can make it. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of reminds me of this opossum that I had made. <laughs> Last year, actually, um, when I was working at DreamWorks, there was this ZBrush group that I was starting to help guide, and uh, not guide, but lead, I guess. Uh, I was like team captain sort of thing. <coughs> anyway, so the idea was that I was I was helping to kind of guide group discussions and um, and you know group challenges and things like that so it's actually last February um, the challenge we had come up with was you know just just Valentine you know do something Valentine related and Valentine's Day <coughs> the uh, we were coming back home, uh, my family and I, and we were pulling up to our garage, and along the wall, 
um, right by our garage, there was this massive opossum. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just sitting there and it was just staring at us like like I swear it, it didn't move the whole time we were coming it's like it's like if I hold perfectly still they can't see me see take that skin shade wax modifier let's take it down to 50% just cuz I don't need to be a bajillion percent <laughs> okay Okay guys, what are you what are you thinking so far? I'm thinking that there just definitely doesn't feel like there's enough color variation. So what we're gonna do, let's grab the hair. And this is, this is, you know, just weird blocking hair. So what I'm going to do, let's turn on Sculptress Pro mode. Whoops. Let's just kind of sculpt this down because it doesn't need to be so freaking huge. Okay, let's turn this into a fiber mesh. Where is my fiber mesh tab? Am I looking past it? There it is. Okay, light box. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I want to make this look like cotton candy. And there isn't really anything super close. So let's just grab something basic. And we'll just kind of, okay, so, so first off, let's take a render just to be able to see what it looks like as is. Ow. Okay, <laughs> that's some pretty weak sauce hair. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to modify this to be able to make it so that it feels more, I don't need, I don't need an image. Um, I want it to feel more like cotton candy. So we're going to put in base like that and a tip fairly similar in color but lighter okay So this is interesting to me, is that it's going and it's falling in that direction now, but before, it was kind of falling forward. It was, it's really kind of weird. Anyway, let's... Uh, Let 
turn off sculptress mode. Got rid of it. You guys trying to be too ambitious or something, I don't know. <laughs> guys, let's try this again. Turn off the texture. Let's get this base color in here. Let's get this tip color in here. Okay. So Let's take this gravity, let's take twist, So right now I'm just kind of playing around with the settings. Um, fiber mesh isn't something that I'm super familiar with, but I'm really, really wanting to figure this out. Um, so things that I'm going to want to go ahead and figure out for this fiber mesh is making it so that it's frizzy. Um, That's actually working really nicely. Interesting, okay. So, let's make our length a whole lot longer. Ooh, let's change up our length variations. Let's see if we can change up some of this clumping. Get some of that color. I, actually, I, I kind of like having the color the way it was. So let's 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 keep it kind of kind of steady the way it is. What I'm essentially saying. So this is the base color over to the left, and this is the tip color. Okay. So this is essentially saying that as we get to the end. Um, as we as we start off, we're wanting to keep that base color, and we're wanting to get we're wanting to get to our tip color this fast. Uh, we don't even, we don't even have to get all the way to our tip color. I mean, we can do all sorts of let's see clump variations. That could be cool. Whoa! It's like the cotton candy machine exploded on his head. Let's see what it's doing. Okay. My reaction is that it feels like, one, it's not dense enough, but two, this hair feels too wispy. Okay, like it's getting too light. So maybe what we do is we take this back dial it back more into a solid color. Maybe dial this back into a more solid color as well. Let's kind of dial this more over to more blue rather than green. Let's try that, see if it does anything good for me color-wise. Then we'll see what we can do. Color-wise, I'm kind of liking that. Where's the thickness, the width? Okay. Density variations. Gravity, clumps, tile.
Interesting, okay. So we're going to leave that the way that it is. Modulate by face area, embed fibers. Let's embed it just a little bit. Eh, maybe not. So I think this might be, yeah, this is what I was looking for. Scale at the tip. Okay, so I'll, I'll take this so that it's like four. Let's try that. Let's, let's get a quick render out of that and see what it looks like. It looks, it looks like a total mess now, but I should be able to go ahead and, uh, once I accept this, I should be able to groom it just fine. And that's definitely not looking quite the way that I want it to. Let me see. <coughs> Let's assess it a little bit. Let's see. I think I'm trying, to, I'm trying to decide if the thing that I don't like about it, if it has to do with the number of segments, which will make it so that it's a smoother curve for each uh, each hair spline, or if the thing that I don't like has to do with the disorder, which is something that I'm also going to be able to do once I accept it. I can groom it so that it's you know going in the direction and everything that I want it to. Let me, let me do this. Let's take that uh, scale tip down to two. Let's try this render one more time. I'm liking that better. Okay, so Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this and we are going to, let's say accept for a faster interaction speed while ski should be activated. Would you like to activate fast pre mode? Yes. So, draw micromesh. Okay. And where were the? Okay. Let's play with this now. Let's let's just let's just play with it because I want to play with it. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> did I make it think too much? I think I did. I am getting the spinning wheel of death. should have gone for a desktop and really just decked it out. Here we go. <laughs> That's the fun. Oh, hello. 
You you uh you jumped in right in time. <laughs> right in time for me to be having problems. ZBrush not responding end task. Alright, let's try this one more time. hair be used for games or 3d printing or is it just used for rendering um, if you watch uh, Pablo Munoz in his streams uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you Shane man on on Facebook uh, if you watch um, Pablo Munoz in his um, in his streams then you will be able to uh, kind of better understand something that he does. Yeah, this is like, this is way too much. I'm going to kind of get rid of this for now. Um, something that he does to be able to get usable cards using, yeah, it was too much hair. <laughs> um, Something that he does to be able to get usable cards from fiber mesh with you know the, this technique. Um, I think he has a better computer than I do, which is oh my goodness! Do you guys see what happened? Oh man! Okay, so it just got rid of my materials. Not a huge deal. We'll just go ahead. We'll select this one and then we'll say load candy shade 5 good grief now I need to go ahead and get my other materials in ZBrush crashed and so I lost like some material stuff. It was so sad. Where's toy plastic? Okay, let's grab toy plastic, copy material, come over to one of the junk materials, paste material. Okay. Good. Okay, so now what we need to do materials anymore. So I want this one to be I'm gonna call it gummy plastic. Cause why not, right? Shade 5. Let's make sure that this is on material and
Let's make this one more of a glossy. Not quite as glossy, let's see. Yeah, we'll call that good. Okay, so let's save that. Yeah, we'll call it Candy Shade 5, right in my startup, so now it should stay. Oh, the other thing I want is to turn up Properties, turn on wax preview. Okay. Well, so far that's looking good. That's looking all right. So I'm just gonna go ahead, call that good, and let's let's call it for a night. Ran into too many. Too many bumps. Too many hiccups. Not enough dragons. <laughs> okay, so the plan, and it might be something I end up doing at a different time, not necessarily on stream. If I can find spare time. What is spare time, really? <laughs> See if I can figure out a time where I can go ahead and maybe figure out getting all this stuff uh, moved in, moved on, moved forward. So far not so bad. We were able to make some, some pretty decent progress. We were able to make those horns look like, you know, waffle cones, which is awesome. Okay. 
and then we were able to put the frosting on top, which is awesome. Um, the thing that I want to do beyond this, just, just real quick before I turn off, let's turn both of these back to about that half point, give myself that noise again. Okay, let's go back into that frosting. Where is the frosting? <laughs> there it is. Okay, I'm not worried about making this a super straight line. I am, however, worried about making this feel like frosting, and so far it doesn't have enough noise, so let's let's boost the noise. Maybe not quite that much, but definitely more than it was. That's a lot cooler. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> okay. Trying to decide with these eyes if it would be better or not. Let's try this. Let's go ahead and say masking. Um, when to mask that border. So you can see it's got the border masked. If I invert that and soften it just once, that might get me just the right kind of effect that I need. I think I like that better. See, now it feels more like he's looking down. Yeah, we'll call that cool. We'll call that cool. Now, just for the sake of making sure that I have <coughs> a good little specular highlight in here. Smaller. Okay, draw that out. Okay. Come on. 
geometry crease. Let's crease those. Push them in. Let's turn off symmetry. over here and we want to have the uh, that spec on the same side because otherwise and in fact we don't even need this one We can just come over here and say delete hidden. We can say hold control, drag and drop. Let's kind of rotate it a little bit. Deleted right there. We'll just call that good for now. We'll call that good for now. And for real this time. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna call it there. Okay. So yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll make cool render to kind of end the night on and uh, we'll call it good. <laughs>